This video is about how the price mechanism works to allocate resources. The price mechanism with these forces of supply and demand has a really important role to play in a market economy then, because uh, they fulfill three main functions. So the first of those is the rationing function, which means that only consumers who are actually prepared to pay the market price for a product are going to be able to purchase it. And so that level of scarcity raises prices, which is what helps to preserve stocks of a product. So this really is how resources are allocated when they're scarce. It helps determine which consumers can access them based on their willingness and ability to pay. We've also got the incentive function, which is how lower prices incentivize consumers who are looking to maximize their satisfaction, their utility. At lower prices, they'll be getting better value for money, so they'll be incentivized to increase their quantity demanded, while higher prices are going to incentivize those suppliers who are looking to maximize profits, and the higher prices will provide more profits for those suppliers to access. And then we've got the signaling function of prices, which is about helping buyers and sellers to make decisions about whether it's worth, worth, worthwhile to buy or sell a product. So it's really like a message to producers or consumers not currently in the market to enter or possibly for those in the market currently to leave. And we can see these forces at work actually in the diagram if there was to be, let's say, for example, a shift in the supply curve. So let's say that producers costs of production increase, which causes supply to shift to the left. We'll start to see these functions of prices and how they would work to allocate resources. So we would have that rationing function because if the price stayed the same, then there would be a shortage and the rationing function helps with the increase in price causing a contraction along that demand curve and reducing the quantity demanded, I suppose addressing that shortage. You've also at the same time got that incentive function and the upward pressure on price causes a increase in quantity supplied and that expansion along the supply curve. And so you get that new equilibrium point at Q1 and P1. But over time, that new equilibrium may actually send a signal to suppliers who are outside the market to enter, which might end up then moving supply back to the right um, and, and moving it back towards its initial position. And we draw these supply and demand curves quite statically. But in reality, these forces of supply and demand are moving dynamically all the time, which is in a market economy, at least how we solve the problem of allocating these scarce resources and how we address that economic problem of scarce resources and unlimited wants. So if that's how the price mechanism works, there are a number of problems or disadvantages with allocating resources in this way as well. And all of these we've actually looked at already through the various forms of market failure. So we've got externalities, which are these external costs or benefits which can cause under or over production and consumption. We've got merit and demerit goods, which are goods which are gonna be consumed at too high in the case of demerit goods or too low in the case of merit goods, a level. And then we've got public goods, which are goods uh, which the market will go missing because of that free rider problem. Uh, we've got market imperfections. So in the case of monopoly power, imperfect information, factor immobility, we've all seen those causing market failures. And then we've got inequality and how markets can very often lead to a highly unequal allocation of resources. Even with these problems, there is some suggestion that extending the price mechanism could actually be used to improve the allocation of resources. And one of the areas that this has been suggested would be in the field of charitable or voluntary activities. So, for example, giving blood, which is something that we don't have enough people doing. We've got a bit of a shortage going on there. So we could introduce a market for this and we could actually pay people for their donations. So the price mechanism there is being used to help by incentivizing donors, which in this case, they're actually the suppliers. They're supplying blood to that market and using the price mechanism and paying them can help to give them the incentive to do more of that. Now, there are a few problems with doing this. I think first and foremost, we can consider the moral implications of that. 
if you got to the case of donating organs as well, I think most people would agree it would be highly morally problematic to have people donating a kidney, for example, be just because they really needed the money. So that would be a big issue. And there's also, as well as this, quite a lot of evidence that suggests that introducing a payment for the donation can actually reduce the amount of people that come forward. Because most people give blood for philanthropic reasons. They do it to do something good. And you introduce a payment to that transaction. So maybe you say you're going to pay them £10 to come in and give blood. You take away this generous aspect and people start to more objectively weigh up the costs and benefits. So that same person who was happy to generously give blood for free might now decide that actually £10 isn't enough of an incentive once that relationship becomes a cold transaction. There's a couple of other areas where we might consider um, goods and services that are tr traditionally provided by the government, extending and using elements of the price mechanism to increase efficiency. So you might think about infrastructure projects, which are often outsourced to private companies, even though they're still paid for with public funds. And also, we sometimes have welfare support that comes in the form of free meals, and that might be provided instead using vouchers. So again, the market mechanism is actually providing the goods and services, but the payment for them is coming from the government.